a takedown would tie it and take it to overtime. But the time is going to run out. The champion, Ornamont, the number one ranked wrestler in the nation, wins the championship here. Aaron Wernemont, Jr., won his 33rd straight, two-time Iowa Conference champion. There you're looking at him. The junior from Wartburg, Aaron Wernemont, the champion at 157 pounds. He understood that as good a wrestler as he was, or as good a football player as he was, um, there was a lot of things to life, and he really enjoyed life. When he was around, or when he came into the room, uh, the mood just lifted. You know, he brightened, brightened the room. Uh, he lifted up people who he was around. Just one of those guys where you're, you're so proud when you see him, and to say, hey, he's you know he's our friend. He's our he was the best man in our wedding. I don't think I ever saw Aaron mad, and if it was just for a split second, and then. He's back to always having a smile. He was probably the, the uh, guy that most people out there thought was the best Division Three wrestler in the country his last couple of years. Life is worth living, and it's worth living full, and no matter what you do. That was Aaron Wernermont. I just think he made an impact in the room, um, not just as a wrestler, but as a person. One of the little wrestlers wanted to dig out his his old backpack and wore it to school yesterday and and uh, his mom was asking why and he's, he said well Aaron's autographs on the back the phone rings and my wife answers the phone and basically the nurse was on the phone saying, are you uh, Aaron's mom, Leah? Yes. And, uh, well, we're working on him right now. What do you mean working on him? It's not my son. My son's a two-time NCAA champion. There is no way that that's my son. He, is, he and his wife are training for a marathon next month. There's no way, no. They called back and the nurse talked just a little bit and the doctor got on the line and first thing I said, normal reaction would be, is he conscious? And uh, the doctor said, no, I hate to tell you this, but your son passed away. And of course we were in instant shock. Mom and dad called like right after my alarm went off and I knew something was wrong. Wait a minute, there's just no, there's no way they would call me at 530. Well, this is really weird. And I was like, there's something wrong, that's, that's not right. I just remember thinking, please let someone just be sick. Went over and picked my phone up and <clears throat> there was my dad on the phone, my mom, of course. And they, I answered the phone and they were both audibly sobbing. It, my dad just answered. We have terrible news. And I said, just what? Just tell me now. And said that uh, we'd lost Aaron and that he was gone. Um, I was actually at work yesterday. Um, I don't remember what time it was. After like the fifth call, I, I answered it. He just says, have you heard? I'm like, no, what's up? And then he just said, Aaron Warnemont's dead. I fell to my knees. I felt so weak. I don't, I don't know if I talked for about five whole minutes, it seemed like. I sat there for a while just thinking, this, this can't be true. Got home and went to my room and there was a poster of us winning a national title, you know, all of us holding a trophy and, and hanging out. And so then it kind of hit me. I looked through pictures, I looked through um, any videos I had or anything like that and just, I kind of just sat there and, I mean, I just cried. And coach called, that was tough. For us, you know, we just got back from winning the national championship and the phones blew up for another reason. And, and like coach said, you know, they're not comparable as far as importance. And Whitbury Wrestling was on a high and then a couple days later, something like this happens. It's, it goes from an all-time high to an all-time low. 
I went over to their office on Monday afternoon. They're like little kids in there watching the tapes and stuff. When you go from such a high to such a low, um, I, just, I just, I can't even put it into words. Nice high crotch attempt there by Ornamount. He's got dropped in on the leg. He's gonna try to come out the back door. Keeps when he walked out, as coaches, we got no points given yet. You know, we got, we got nice it. Nice shot by Hanson to scramble there, but Wernermount's gonna end up on top. The ability to pick up moves and strategy, and he, was, he was amazing. Good he was, he was by far the best of all of us in Two wrestling, points by take far. Down to go along with the escape, puts Wernermount out in front 3-0. He just did things the right way, um, which showed when he was out there wrestling. One of four Wartburg wrestlers ranked number one in the nation. Fun to watch. Um, just kind of class Jacob acting. Meg, you never knew. You knew he would never pounds. pull anything. You know, uh, East Coast timeout-ish. <laughs> Wernemont does a nice job of dropping in, back in on that ankle. He was fun to watch and fun like to sit in the chair to to because uh, he knew something good was going to happen. His style, he is very, like, knew when, when to make movements and what to do to conserve the least amount of energy, and then when he needed that energy, boom, he hit it. His technique was like no other that, you know, that I've coached and, and really not, not like anybody I've ever really watched. The guy was a, a real talented individual, worked his butt off, you know, I mean, he wasn't a guy we had to beg to get to do more, you know, I mean, the guy just, just knew what had to be done and did it. He's just, he had this way of wrestling that he made it look easy. Um, if you'd never watched wrestling and you watched Aaron Warmont wrestle even in the national finals, you know, his toughest matches, it, it still looks easy. People would crowd around the mat when he wrestled because they wanted to watch him. He was just not a head case. He just went out and did what he needed to do. And that was it. It was like not a big deal to him. He did not ever want uh, attention. You know, he, he brought sort of the focus onto others in positive ways and didn't ever want you know, if, if I said congratulations on your national championship, he would say thank you, and that was the end of it. He didn't want any more going on about it. I would always bring it up, and it would almost make him a little uncomfortable sometimes when I would bring it up. Now, of course, I was very proud of him and stuff like that, so I would bring it up saying, oh yeah, my brother, I mean, he just got done winning a national title. You know, he hasn't lost in you know, two years, all this stuff, and uh, he would almost be a little bit embarrassed by it. He'd just put his head down and kind of smile a little bit, you know. He's a very humble person. Obviously, he was very successful, but he never let it get to his head. Always gave the other opponent um, the respect that they deserved, and very, very humble. Whether he won or lost, he acted the same. Very talented, and he'll get a takedown there for two points, and he'll go up two to nothing. He was in my office, and I asked him if he could, if he was any good at wrestling, and he said, "I think I'll be all right." He didn't, because he, he gave me no impression, like. I mean, it sounds ridiculous now, but I didn't know if he was any good. And he just said, I think I'll be all right. Currently ranked number 157 pounder, Aaron Wernemont, who's a junior. Uh, and uh, Aaron Wernemont having a very impressive season so far. You listen to Taylor Swift before you wrestle. Yeah. Everybody else listens, you know, hardcore. You listen to Taylor Swift. Yeah, he was listening to Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He still got that leg in there. There it is. He came up with about 15 minutes left in the late afternoon lab. And he said, Dr. Weston, the conference wrestling meet starts in 15 minutes. And I, I'm the third or fourth match. I think I better go. And I said, Aaron, what are you doing here? And he said, OK, I think I'll go now. Looking in their eyes, you can tell that, you know, the eye of a champion, you know, they really wanted him. 
winning back-to-back -back national titles. Um, him winning the title, um, him winning the title before me encouraged me and pushed me to do the exact same thing. Um, I couldn't have done it without him winning it before me. There it is, we got him on a roll too. Back point, see if he can't close it out. You gotta squeeze it here. You know, I just think that those type of kids come around once, once in a lifetime, and I just feel really fortunate to have been able to coach Aaron. Bernamont will get the win with a score of 13 to four. It's just one of those situations where there really is no answer. You know, even even when we do come up with what, what exactly happened, I mean, there's not going to ever be an answer for exactly why a guy like that with so much to offer the world, with so many good things going, um, is taken so so soon. Just words like that. It's just that can't happen. You know, that's my buddy. That's that that can't happen. We just think this is a dream and we're going to wake up from it and it's just a, it's just a nightmare. I wanted to know what happened, like why? I'm always trying to get across to my students, you don't have to know what you're going to do with your life right away because you're going to have a long life probably well once in a while you're not once in a while something like this is going to happen and it's going to be horrible but i think in this case it was entirely unpredictable and we can ask god why that happens when we get there Words can't describe uh, the feeling that you feel when you hear news like that. That's impossible to describe it. It's just a, a hopeless, law, a hopeless thing, and you just have part of your, uh, especially with Aaron, you have part of your heart ripped out. Just saying the words, I didn't want. It was like saying the words made it final, kind of or real. I just can't imagine how devastating it is for the family to, you know, here's your kid, all, um, national champ, married a beautiful girl, happily married, going to have a bunch of kids, training for a uh, marathon, doing great things in school, going to have a good career, and boom, it's over, and it's, that's all I can think about, it's just devastating. He was always um, really excited about everything that he had going, and, there were, and the guy always had a lot of things going. I'm sure, I'm sure God has a plan, and God, there's a reason for this. I don't know what it is now, and I maybe never will till I see him in heaven, but uh, there has to be a plan. I just don't know what it is. For Kari to say God is good and he has a plan, I just, I just, I really admire the strength that she has because I don't know if I could I need to get married and have plans six months ago and, and end up be planning a funeral. I mean, it just, you never know what God's plan is. Our love is unconditional. We knew it from the start. I see it in your eyes. You can feel it from my heart. You got along 
so good. I mean, we were like the perfect match. Um, like before I had even known him, I had seen him in biology class and I would always tell my best friend, I'm like, he's the love of my life. <laughs> I hadn't even met him yet, but I was like, he's the love of my life. And it's just so funny how it all worked out. I crossed my heart and promised to he dated her in college and they broke up and about nine months after they like broke up or maybe it was a year he called me and was like what do you think about getting me getting back together with Kari and I was like well you broke up with her for a reason all right what's changed what has changed and he's like she just has all of the qualities that I want she just has everything that I want she's pretty smart she loves God, she teaches Bible school, she is athletic, she just has all these qualities and I really enjoy hanging out with her. I was like, then go for it. He's like, I'm really trying so hard to get back with Kari. And he goes, uh, I'm telling you right now, Chris, and he, I remember him saying this, he goes, he goes if, I, if, if I get back together with her, I, I'm marrying her. I, I, I know 100% for sure, I love her and I will be marrying her. I was like, oh my gosh, you were just talking about dating and now you're talking about marriage. So he knew from day one when he started dating her and he was going to marry her. I cross my heart and promise to give all I've got to give to make all your dreams come true. They were absolutely perfect for each other. Um, you know, you just. Curry and I talked so many times about their their what their plans were and you know she just everything for her was revolved around Aaron. You got the promise of my love to keep you warm. They're just like they're awesome for each other. They were meant to be. I mean they're both they're both so compatible, so calm, so loving, so giving. Um, they, most importantly, they put their faith first. And if there's anything like in a couple that you can tell, you know, is how God is impacting them and bringing them closer. And as a couple, they were so strong, um, especially in their faith together. And that's what always stood out most to me. It didn't matter how how hard, how late they stayed up studying on a Saturday night, or if they went out for a few drinks. They, they never failed to go to church in the morning. Like with faith and everything, we, we grew in our faith so much and we could always talk about it with each other. We talked about everything mm -hmm. and it, he was just a real blessing. They were made for each other. Aaron loved her. Corey and him had a really amazing relationship. They, they got each other really well. They respected each other and understood each other. And um, they support each other. He went about that relationship very intentionally, like a man, you know, like mature. He didn't mess around. There was no games. He just loves her. She's such a strong person, and you you know she'll get through this. Um, her and Aaron. I mean, I just always admired their relationship because, you know, like I said in the beginning, they never they never lost sight of what was important. We were probably like that annoying, happy like couple that are always happy. Like we joked around so much. We were just, and it, it was awesome. Rocks on Friday nights. I know that the day that he married Kari, he was so happy, and he had they had a, they had amazing pictures. You could just see that. It, I mean, it was just they were very happy. I've never seen him happier on his wedding day. I know he really loved Kari and he was just really excited to get married and you know start his life with her. You could see it the night before and the night the day of. That was the best time of his life. Mm -hmm. No question about it. Absolutely. She is better than any trophy. Yeah, better than the national championships, better than any and they were so looking forward to a very long life. You you get married and then you know you're you're one step closer to I mean family was everything to him and him and Kari wanted the exact same. I think he was really happy when when him and Kari were one step closer to that. Knew that, you know, they made that promise to be there for each other for the rest of their lives. Her and Aaron were so 
so perfect together and you know they'll see each other again, you know, down the road, but I just didn't, she just, I admire her for her strength and uh, she's just really lucky to have all the memories that she does of Erin. They just, they had a lot of wonderful moments together that we know she'll cherish. I'm just so blessed that he was part of my life. I mean, I wish it would have been longer, but I'm just blessed he, you know, he taught me so much. I love your love the most. loved God and I think the Lord really put a contentment in his heart and just Aaron felt at peace with his faith and with his life. This is a man who all, not only was close to God himself but uh, he was always not pushing you but nudging you towards being closer to God. You know, he's, He really was um, the servant of God. He sp really spread the word. You know, he's a person of uh, Christ. Um, he was a great character, had high morals. We sat at this table, had a little lunch together, and um, rather than studying, he started talking about his faith. And I really realized through that how deep, deep his faith was, and his faith was the most important thing to him. The most important thing. And I, I looked across the table at him and I thought, what what a wonderful person he is to have that deep faith and just to be himself and he was himself always himself but you know with what's happened over the last uh, few days I've said to myself you know if I have any consolation I know Aaron's in heaven because he had a deep faith in God and he practiced that faith if anybody he's he's with God now he was very close to God had a very strong faith, and I know he's in a better spot. I know he's going to be with us forever and, and looking down on us. I know he's in a better place. I know he's. I, I know for sure, without a hint of doubt, that he's with God. But uh, you know, my selfish part of me is very. It's very hard to accept. Even though he's in a better place, I, I want him here with me. You know. We're just being selfish. We want him here with us. You know. But someday we'll see him again, and it'll be awesome. So. I'm just jealous because they get to see him every day, forever, and I don't get to see him until I die. And I just miss him, I just want to see him again. Yeah. But I don't worry about Aaron at all. I know he's at peace. I just worry about us. I still am waiting for him to walk through the door with this, you know, kind of joking mannerism and, and smile. And it's very difficult for me to, uh, to grasp that He's not going to be coming through that. <clears throat> he's not going to come through that door. And knowing that he's just going to be across the street, he needs to be on this side of the street with us. Yeah. When I think about Aaron, you just think about, uh, you know, the way he would smile. That smile, I mean, the guy always had a smile, and it was, uh, it was contagious. His smile, his smile. <laughs> This is wonderful. Smile. His smile and his sense of humor. He had, he had such a great sense of humor. I mean, he, he would just make you laugh. His smile. And I've, you've heard that so many times. We have thousands of pictures that we've been going through, and there's uh, zero that are of him not smiling. Aaron was just full of life. He was so content, so happy. Um, he's always had a smile. Anybody who knew him, he was always smiling. His smile was very smile. contagious. Phenomenal. If you were around him at all, you couldn't help but smile. One of the most positive individuals that, that I've ever been around. He's a genuine guy, just good-hearted. Just touched everyone that met him. Everyone loved him. He was such an inspiration to people here at Pocahontas, people at Warburg. I mean, every Indiana, 
He touched people everywhere he went. More than happy, he was content. Because yeah. happiness comes and goes, contentment stays with you. And he had that contentment. They could never stay mad at Aaron. You can't, even when he was in the wrong, couldn't <laughs> stay mad at him. You were mad at him, he would do something that, that would make you laugh. Uh, yeah. You know, he had a thousand little smart comments he would say. He would just sit there and he would make me laugh and I, and I couldn't stay mad at him. He was one of those kids that would almost purposely antagonize you, get you to the point of being mad and then do one thing and you're like, I can't even be mad at you right now. I can count the number of times he, on one hand that I really fought with Aaron. He just never would fight with him because he hated confrontation. He just wanted everybody to get along. Kind of was a gel that kept our family together. He's always never seen him in a bad mood. Um, you know, if it was, he kicked it in a few minutes. Just really in every way. I mean, the guy's, the guy's an outstanding individual and uh, had a real passion for life. Didn't take anything for granted. He lived life the right way. He, he dedicated himself to school and to everything else he was involved in. He was just a uh, magnificently bright light. I mean, he just brightened everybody's light or life up and brightened everybody's day. He had such a genuine heart. It's and the love he had for his his family. You know that his family meant the world to him. Everybody knows how good of a wrestler Aaron was. Pretty dang good. Um, he was an even better person off the mat. He was one in a million. He really was. He was just a very special individual. To meet Aaron was to love Aaron. Aaron was one of those, there's another mountain to climb, uh, there's another uh, uh, challenge, there's another goal, and uh, let's go for it. He is the example we'd like to uh, continue to, and that gives us an opportunity to, to educate the new guys coming in. There was one time where I, I took my keyboard out to the dining room table and he sat right by me with his guitar and we just played and saying to let it be together. He just, he appreciated every little thing and he knew how much music meant to me and he would, I mean, for him to just come and sit, who, how many guys would do that? I mean, have the patience. And he just sat there and we just sang for, I mean, a good half hour. Aaron was one of those top tier, top level type of athletes and uh, person, students. Uh, he was just a great guy to work with. I had the, I guess, honor to uh, coach him when he won his first state title, which was obviously a, a huge accomplishment, so very proud of him. He's an amazing wrestler. I think he was real thankful that Chris was there because Chris taught him a lot, and that was kind of, it was a highlight for Chris to see him win the state championship. I would say that, that was one of the happiest that I've been, and I know it was one of the happiest times that uh, Aaron had, you know, I mean, he was, <clears throat> I was very proud of him. He was what it was all about. He, he was a student of the sport, and he was able to perform at the highest level. The guy was a three-time academic All-American, three-time NCAA All-American, two-time national champion, won the last 80 matches in his career. I mean, it was just phenomenal. He really epitomized what a Division III star athlete was. As great as he was in college, he just never um, forgot where he grew up. He was one of our best guys ever put on our singlet. He did leave a legacy. That's exactly, I mean, that's exactly what he did. And uh, we want to make sure that, that legacy continues. On the mat, uh, people will remember Aaron, his pictures up on the wall. You know, his accolades will speak for themselves. And he said, I, you know, maybe I want to go into coaching, which would be great. He'd be great at it. But I said, Aaron, if you're capable of going to med school, go to med school. Me and Keller, we are not capable <laughs> of going to med school. <laughs> go, go, go do it, man. And he, Instead of just putting it on me, he goes, yeah, you're right, coach. He didn't say that. He goes, okay. <laughs> it was really neat to see a kid be able to have fun and yet be focused on his goals. You know, the guy did everything right. Two-time national champ, academic All-American, still had fun. Off the mat, you know, his life didn't revolve around wrestling. It was fun to spend time off the mat doing different things with a guy who's been so successful on the mat, too. He just he wanted to have fun. He didn't care what he was doing. He loved being outside. He loved spending out, uh, time outdoors, like just fishing. Like I'd just go out fishing with him just because he loved to do it. And I don't, know, I don't, I think it's boring kind of. <laughs> he liked it, so. Obviously, he, he excelled at uh, wrestling, but I mean, he did everything. No matter what it was Aaron did, Aaron excelled at it. When we were in third grade, um, 
we were actually at recess and we found a rabbit hole and um, we actually went into the school and found a little bucket and uh, got some full, filled it full of water and we went to the rabbit hole and dumped the water in the rabbit holes and three little baby rabbits came out. So Aaron caught him um, with his shirt and uh, went back into the school, grabbed his bag. We're like, oh yeah, let's take these home, you know, we have our own pet rabbits. And so about 20 minutes after recess, um, all three of the rabbits were loose in the classroom because they had chewed holes in his book bag, which we didn't know. And you know, everybody's standing on their desk screaming and stuff. And Aaron and I are just sitting there, you know, like, what are we gonna do? We're gonna name our son if we have one. Um, his middle name will be Aaron after him, so. Um, really puts him to perspective, I think, for me anyways, is you know, what, what is important in life. And that's one of the things that was so great about Aaron is that the guy did keep a great perspective about what was important you know, in the bigger picture. He lived life the way that it should be lived. He had fun, he accomplished a lot of his goals, I know. I hope that everybody in the Warburg community and the Pocahontas community, just everybody who knows of Aaron, um, I hope that they walk away growing in their faith because of this, because I think that that's so important and they you know, set their priorities straight from that. This. There will always be more work, more school, more things to do, more worries, more little things to fret over, but it's not worth it. This reminds you of how delicate and fragile life is. He's He's as close as perfect as it gets, and I and I really mean that. I sincerely, and I'm not even just being subjective because I'm, I'm his sister. Um, he really is as close to perfect as, as it gets, and anybody who's met him, he stands out. If I ever like wanted to do something and he did, he would, you know, be like, okay, we'll do what you want to do. Like he was just such a sweetheart, the best guy ever. Absolutely, without a doubt. Yeah. He was a wonderful guy. The world's going to be one short the best man that I know besides my father. He's the best man that I've ever met. I mean, these are things that we often say when something tragic happens, but in, in Aaron's case, he really was. You, you always know that he'll be in your hearts and watching over you. He's left a, a, a lasting impact on a lot of people, and probably more than we really realize. I can just picture him right now kind of looking down on us like, dude, guys, like, you, you gotta, you know, remember the good things. It hurts now. and. That's because we're going to miss him, but there's, you know, that's gut-wrenching, heartbreaking, but, you know, there's going to come a time when it's going to go from missing him to remembering him, and that's when it's uh, going to put a little smile on your face, and you're going to say, oh, that was there. He'll never, ever, ever be forgotten. Remember me in a Bible cracked and faded by the year. Remember me in a sanctuary filled with silent prayer. Remain.